What's going on guys? Welcome back to Crazy for KVs RC. I'm Tim. Welcome back to my channel. So if you saw my RC tools for beginners video, I did a little portion where I was on the computer and I was talking a little bit about um, a good entry level electric screwdriver. And I talked a little bit about the hyper tough, the four volt electric screwdriver with the clutch. Um, kind of showed it a little bit. Didn't have one at the time. Well, I had some guys in the comments uh, mention that they really liked it and they suggest I give it a try. And I actually wanted to do a little comparison video. Um, definitely not what I'm gonna do most of the time, but um, I was intrigued enough by it, by its price mostly and the features it has, uh, enough to give it a try. So today we're gonna do a comparison to the Hyper Tough, let's give you guys the exact so this is the HyperTuff 4 volt cordless electric screwdriver and it does have a seven position clutch. It's got a six positions then it's got like a max. And this is the DeWalt 8 volt gyro and this one has a clutch as well. This is kind of the gold standard right now when it comes to electric screwdrivers for RC application. Um, pretty handy for assembling like uh, assembled furniture, uh, things like that but um, really handy when it comes to RC. The clutch is really good. You get a lot of variation. Um, you can set it really low just to get things kind of started or you can crank it all the way up and you could drive screws into drywall with it if you want. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend it if that's your uh, desired uh, use case, but um, yeah, it's been great for me. I've had one for oh, six months or so, maybe, maybe seven or eight months and it's been awesome. Uh, one I bought came with two extra batteries, a little charger, um, it's got this little bit holder on top, just, just clamps on there, but it's quick change. Um, and this one has 16 settings. So you get one through 15 and you keep cranking and there's a max setting on this one as well. Um, you can run it in the kind of the pistol grip format like this, or you can hit the unlock and you can use it as a traditional screwdriver. Um, which is pretty slick. And this one has 16 settings. So you get one through 15 and you keep cranking and there's a max setting on this one as well. Um, you can run it in the kind of the pistol grip format like this, or you can hit the unlock and you can use it as a traditional screwdriver, um, which is pretty slick. The one feature that this has that the HyperTuff does not is the gyro. So you know, there's no switch for forward or reverse. It's literally, you, you activate it by pulling the trigger, then you turn it forward and it goes forward. And how far and how fast you turn it is what determines the speed. Same with reverse, turn it the other way. It seems like it would be weird. It is so intuitive. It's awesome. You just give it a little spin and it'll get started. That way you know you're you know running a screw in straight, especially if you're going straight into plastic. Um, and then you can kind of crank the speed up as you want to drive it home, finish it off. Like I said, the clutch is really good too. Kind of allows you to dial it in. Once you're building a kit, usually the manufacturer will use the same formula for their plastics for most of the stuff in the kit. So you kind of play with the clutch. I always set it real low, started on around five and I slowly just turn it up as I need to. Um, and that helps like kind of dial it in. I find the perfect setting and I run it all the way in until the clutch uh, engages or you know disengages the power and this one has 16 settings so you get 1 through 15 and you keep cranking and there's a max setting on this one as well um, you can run it in the kind of the pistol grip format like this or you can hit the unlock and you can use it as a traditional screwdriver um, which is pretty slick the one feature that this has that the HyperTuff does not is the gyro. So you know, there's no switch for forward or reverse. It's literally, you, you activate it by pulling the trigger, then you turn it forward and it goes forward. And how far and how fast you turn it is what determines the speed. Same with reverse, turn it the other way. It seems like it would be weird. It is so intuitive. It's awesome. You just give it a little spin and it'll get started. That way you know you're you know running a screw in straight, especially if you're going straight into plastic. Um, and then you can kind of crank the speed up as you 
want to drive it home, finish it off. Like I said, the clutch is really good too. Kind of allows you to dial it in. Once you're building a kit, usually the manufacturer will use the same formula for their plastics for most of the stuff in the kit. So you kind of play with the clutch. I always set it real low, start it on around five, and I slowly just turn it up as I need to. Um, and that helps like kind of dial it in. I find the perfect setting and I run it all the way in until the clutch uh, engages or you know disengages the power. This one also can be ran in this configuration. It also has this button up top and you can run it like a regular screwdriver. You know, you obviously would use it like this. I see I'm, I'm trying to twist it. This one doesn't have that option. It's not a gyro. Um, it just has, has a little button switch on the side and then in between is like your safety or uh, just to keep it from getting drained in a bag or something. They both have lights. Um, this one just has a small light. This one just has two LEDs on the outside. So you get a little bit better light with that. Less likely to have a shadow in your way, but um, pretty minor. I have pretty decent lighting in here, so I'm not too worried about that. We're gonna do a couple of tests. Uh, we're just gonna use a piece of two by four that I used to, you know, if I need to drill something out here in the shop. Um, just got a couple of wood screws and we're gonna crank the clutch all the way up and we're gonna see if both of them will drive. The one is four volts, the Dewalt is eight volts. Um, I am a little biased, obviously. I really like my Dewalt, but I did go out and spend my own money on the, the HyperTuff, so I'm curious. Um, in worst case, if I like it enough, it'll go in my like travel bag. If I go to an event or something, I don't have to you know worry about cranking hand tools if I have to do something fairly quickly. So for our first test, we're just gonna crank the clutches all the way up and we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna start a timer from the time I start and we're gonna see how long it takes to drive the screws all the way in. Both the electric screwdrivers have fresh batteries. This one has a little uh, battery indicator. Oh, I'm gonna turn it on. Just charge it up. And this one has it as well up top here. So it's all fair. Like I said, eight volts versus four volts. So kind of curious. Um, the weight's pretty similar though, actually. This one seems a little bit more ergonomic. Obviously switching forward to reverse is much easier on this. I have a hard time uh, getting used to finding this, but with um, you know an hour of use or so, you'd probably be real quick with it. So you guys can see, there's a couple holes in here, but we're just gonna start it right here. There's no hole. I'm just gonna stick it just to get it started. Just using the bit that actually came with the HyperTuff. Here we go, let's turn all the way up to max. Let's see, my clutch is all the way on max. Here we go. So that sound you heard was not the clutch engaging or disengaging, but it was actually the uh, Phillips, you know, just wanted to try to strip out on me. Not the highest quality uh, bit. So I annotate the time, we're gonna do the same thing. There's a hole here. We're just gonna go right next to it. Same exact screw. And the HyperTuff doesn't have a quick connect, it's just magnetic, but it works pretty good. And here we go, put it, it's in right. It doesn't have forward, it just says right. Here we go. Oh, let's see, we're on max, yep. I'll show you guys that just. Let's see right there, little white arrow. It's kind of hard to read the max, but it's there. Here we go. Definitely a little bit more of a struggle. It actually uh, did it slow enough, it wasn't trying to slip out on me but um, we'll do a comparison of the time. You guys can see, they both got driven in all the way. They're flush with the wood. Pretty interesting, honestly, the uh, HyperTuff. It struggled a little more. You could hear it kind of uh, straining, but ended up getting the screw all the way in. 
and a wood screw going into a two by four is probably gonna be tougher than pretty much any RC application. So this is an RC channel. Um, so yeah, we're, uh, that's kind of what we're focused on, but you know, maybe you're looking for just a RC screwdriver as well as an around the house screwdriver. Maybe the person who controls your money lives in the same house as you, or, you know, maybe they even sleep in the same bed as you. And, uh, it's going to be a tough sell for them. So, you know, having something that is around the house, it's kind of handy. You don't have to go out to the garage all the time or, you know, wherever your, your big power tools are at. Um, something that's a little dual purpose kind of helps, uh, you know, ease that cost. While we're talking about cost, I paid 14 and some change for this. I'd have to look at the receipt, um, less than $15. I think I paid 110 for this. Um, you get the gyro technology, you get the spare battery, um, you get the quick connect. You also get the little bit finer detail in the clutch. Um, we'll continue to look and see if uh, that really pays a difference, but Another thing about the Hyper Tough is it does not have uh, removable batteries. So you get a, like an AC wall adapter with a little barrel plug and it just plugs in right here in the handle. You get an indicator for charge level, it's just red when it's uh, not fully charged and then it turns green when it is charged. Um, took about two hours for it to charge all the way um, from the time I got it. So. And it already had a little bit of a charge coming out of the package. So if you do a lot of wrenching, um, it might be worth it to have two of them. Maybe have two separate bits and maybe that's what I'll use it for. Maybe I'll have uh, my 2.5 and my the Hyper Tough and maybe the, the 2.0 and the Dewalt just because the clutch is a little bit more sensitive. So for our next test, we're going to use our same handy dandy uh, piece of 2x4, just pine. Um, got two of the same screws. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to simulate something you do not want a ton of power for. So I'm going to turn the clutch all the way down and we're going to see, um, kind of be able to gauge our potential for stripping inadvertently, even with the clutch turned all the way down. So we'll start with the hyper tough this time, not as zoomed in this time. So we're going to start it right here and see right next to this other one. We'll get, just get it barely started. We're gonna turn the clutch all the way down. That's on one. Here we go. Not timing this. This is mostly just to see at what point does the clutch um, actually start working. So, the, uh, the clutch actually went in pretty far. So that's pretty interesting. Um, it's on one and it basically drove the screw almost all the way in. It just couldn't get it flush. Um, that could potentially be a problem if you're not paying attention. Let's, uh, let's do the Dewalt. Switching over here. I like that quick connect though, that is nice. And the fact that it's locked in too, it's not gonna come out accidentally. We're on one. You can see the, right there. We're right here, there's no hole. It's just barely started. And I know that this clutch is very sensitive so it's not gonna drive this screw nearly as far in, but we'll do it anyway. That's it. it Barely start, I can probably pull it out with my hand. It's coming, yep. So I was able to pull it out with my hand. Um, so that's pretty interesting. All right guys, so the second test was definitely a lot more interesting to me. Um, I think the first test, you know, you kind of think, well, this is an eighth of the price. Why would I buy this one? Um, and then, we went to the second test where we set the clutches all the way down and this one shined and uh, it may not seem like it, but I like the fact that when I set it at its weakest setting, um, it barely started on this one. So if you are doing a really sensitive build or you're, you're putting a screw into an aluminum axle, something you cannot afford to strip out. Some of those are, 
in the hundreds of dollars, um, you definitely don't want to accidentally strip something. So if you set that at level five, you know, it's going to get it tight, but it, that clutch is going to break basically um, right when it first hits tension. One is probably going to break before you get the screw all the way in, pretty much no matter what you're screwing it into. There's not a whole lot of use case for level one on the Dewalt, but for five through 10, extremely useful. I usually am right around seven to nine uh, for most plastics and most aluminum. Now, do I recommend this? Yeah, I do. Um, I will caveat it though with the fact that you need to be careful with it. Um, if you're looking for an affordable electric screwdriver, that's not a chuck, like a standard chuck. Uh, it's got a, you know, magnetic, uh, quarter inch attachment. It's got a light, um, it's, you know, it's got adjustable grip, whatever works best for your, um, however you like to wrench. That's pretty sweet. It's extremely affordable. It is rechargeable. Um, no separate batteries or anything like that. But uh, you do get some adjustment on the clutch, but it's not very good. So yeah, HyperTough is a great bang for the buck. It's small. Um, it's portable. If you go on, you know, if you go to different RC events or you want an electric screwdriver to have kind of out there in the field with you, um, keep it in your truck. Uh, dual purpose, around the house type screwdriver, hanging, you know, little screws for pictures or things like that. This is going to be great. Um, again, super affordable. That's the biggest draw for this one. If you're looking to buy once, cry once, not ever wish that you bought something else, um, take a hard look at the Dewalt. Uh, like I said, this is the eight volt gyro model. They make it with the clutch and without. Don't get it without the clutch. Um, that's the biggest draw for this. The clutch is really nice. Lots of adjustment, 16 different settings. You know, a lot of RC guys on YouTube um, recommended this and they didn't steer me wrong. This is one purchase that I do not regret, especially when it comes to tools. Um, it was a little, kind of a hard pill to swallow, but like I said, if you're in the market, if your budget allows, take a hard look at this, especially if you do a lot of wrenching with a lot of different manufacturers or different materials. Um, it can also dual purpose as an around the house type screwdriver. And maybe that helps, you know, make the price a little more digestible. Haven't had any problems with it yet. Um, and it's, that gyro feature is really nice too. I know some people are worried about, you know, maybe they have bad wrists and that's why they have an electric screwdriver. And they're like, well, I don't want to do a twisting motion. It doesn't take much. And it's also locked when you're not using it. So if you need to finish something off, you can use the electric portion and then you can let off the trigger and you can just turn it and just get it snugged up. And it's also locked when you're not using it. So if you need to finish something off, you can use the electric portion and then you can let off the trigger and you can just turn it and just get it snugged up. Um, and you get a really good feel with it. The HyperTough, I haven't really wrenched with it, so I can't really say. I imagine it probably would work in the same fashion. Uh, let off the trigger and you can kind of finish your screw, you know, drive it home, get it snug, and you get a pretty good feel with it as well. Um, and I highly recommend doing that with this one. Um, I would not put RC screws, especially two mil, even two and a half mil um, hex head stuff in with this all the way tight. You're gonna strip it out. Um, the fact that the, the one setting for the clutch just doesn't really uh, vary at all from max is a bit concerning. But when it comes to tools, you kind of get what you pay for. And this is a $14 tool. That's a hundred dollar plus tool. So, so it's kind of shooter's choice, you know, what you decide to do. Do you want to spend a little more, get a little bit better tool with a little bit better, uh, fidelity and a uh, finite adjustment, or do you want to bang for the buck $15 and just get something to give your wrist a little bit of a break during those long wrench sessions. But anyways, I just wanted to try it out. I like it enough that, uh, the next time I travel and go to an event, it'll probably go with me. I probably won't take my Dewalt just in case something happens. It's just a hundred dollars less, you know, on the line. Um, don't think I'm going to have it on the bench just because I don't trust it. And I worry that I won't remember 
to not drive things all the way home with it and to finish them off with a hand tool or just the actual wrist motion with this. So with that being said, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, leave a comment. Let me know if you have one of these or if there's another tool that's kind of more budget friendly or a little less mainstream that you want me to check out. If it's affordable, well, uh, I'll take a look. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.